In the wonderful world of desktop manufacturing, there are more ways to work with plastic than just heating it up and extruding it. You can cut it, mill it, and one of my favorites, vacuum form it. While the others are certainly interesting to watch and exciting to set up, none can go from raw material to finished product as fast as a vacuum former can. Once you've taken your time in the setup stage, you can breeze through a dozen successful cycles in an hour. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through the basic steps to go from a sheet of plastic to a finished part and the considerations along the way. Before you get started, you need to determine if vacuum forming is the method of manufacturing for you. There are more ways to utilize it than I could list out here, but some real world examples of vacuum forming include RC car bodies. They're cheap, they're light, and they're thin enough to be flexible and avoid shattering in a crash. Plastic packaging. Toy packages with a clear plastic bubble adhered to a cardboard backing or with two halves that cradle the toy in a cardboard box. You can also find takeout containers that were vacuum formed as well, usually with a black plastic bottom and a clear top that presses together to keep the food sealed inside. Food molds. Vacuum form molds are often used in the food and chocolatier world for shapes too complex to make by hand. Hollywood prop making and cosplay. All Stormtrooper costumes from the original Star Wars trilogy were vacuum formed, from the armor to the eye lenses. The big thing to consider when creating an object for vacuum forming is that objects cannot have overhangs whatsoever. With 3D printing, 45 degree overhangs are often the limit of unsupported structures. But with vacuum forming, any overhang will become a key that locks the original within the vacuum form plastic shell. In fact, to aid in the release of an original object called a buck, while an ideally shaped buck will have a flare that goes out about five degrees. There are other considerations that can be thought of to help designs be more accurately replicated and easy to remove, but that's for more advanced lessons, not the first. Because it's a simple idea to work with, my goal today is to create a customized tray using the Make You Form Box. To really showcase the need to consider the limitations of the forming buck, I will create one from scratch and create one using a 3D model that already exists and modify it for the medium. In both cases, using a 3D print is the logical choice for me. When selecting a material for your forming buck, you need to consider one that can handle the heat from the hot plastic sheet and the heater above it. You can use a 3D print as your forming buck, but you need to make sure it has the thermal properties to hold up. In my experience, I have gotten lucky with plain PLA by using enough top layers to protect the top from collapsing into the infill. Using Pro Series Tough PLA or Protopasta HD PLA is a promising alternative due to the inherent thermal resistance. Otherwise, you can move up to PTG or ABS if you intend to use this buck heavily. If you aren't using a 3D print, you can use something carved out of wood, a plaster casting, metal, or even a potato if you're creative with that. Keep in mind that the hot plastic sheet will capture all the details of the original, from layer lines to wood grain. So if it is a concern, sand or coat your buck to make it as smooth as you need. My model of choice to modify will be our mascot fill. When laying face up, there are a number of features that would lock the 3D print into the vacuum form plastic. Modification will be relatively simple as you could spend a lot of time getting it just right, or you could just start from scratch and ensure that it's not a solution that's held together with duct tape. Simply enough, I just laid fill back and started changing the support settings to fill in the gaps. I turned off any air gaps or Z distance, enabled perimeters and no X and Y distance, and set the resolution of the supports to be incredibly fine so it closely contours around the model and doesn't seriously change fill's shape. Both sets of bucks were printed using Pro Series Tough PLA, which has some thermal resistance already, but I made sure to cover my bases by using eight top layers just to be extra safe. Plug in the Make You Form Box. Plug the vacuum cleaner, shop vac, or household into the outlet in the back of the form box and the hose into the back port using the adapter if necessary. Make sure you have the vacuum set to its strongest setting. In this case, our vacuum has a high pile carpet setting and that's what we'll want to have set to on. Follow the temperature directions listed on the packaging for the clear sheet, five on the heating dial in this case. Set the timer to the recommended time listed on the packaging, in this case, one minute. Wait until the red light indicating the heater is not up to temperature has turned green. Remove the protective film from one side of the plastic sheet. Unclamp the top half of the plastic holder and slide it up toward the heater until it locks. Lay the sheet down on the bottom half of the holder before bringing the top half back down and clamping it in place. The lock on the holder is strong, so don't be surprised at the force it takes to disengage it. With the sheet firmly held in place, raise the entire holder assembly up to the heat and start the timer. You should notice two things, a loud ticking from the form box, accompanied with the indicator light flashing yellow. Place the buck in the center of the mesh. Keep an eye on the plastic sheet. It should get wavy before it forms a big dome that will start to droop. 
The timer should be a reliable measure, but a good rule of thumb to follow is to let the plastic droop half the height of your buck. When the plastic drops enough or when the timer picks up the pace and then stops, drop the holder down onto the buck. At this point, the vacuum will engage and pull the air out from under the plastic, allowing it to fully cover the entire buck. Wait roughly one minute for the plastic to cool enough that you don't distort it when removing the form. Reverse the process of clamping the plastic sheet to remove the finished form. If you're finished vacuum forming, set the heater dial to zero and let it cool down. To remove the 3D prints, a little flexing can be used. The hexagon shape should pop out easily, but the fills will present just a little more trouble because of their flat sidewalls. If these fills were a little bigger, they'd present more of a difficulty, but in this case, it'll still be relatively easy to get them out. Once the bucks are removed, you're free to trim the excess plastic off the form and use these ice trays right away. With the forms finished, I poured some water into the molds, let it freeze overnight, and admired my handiwork. If you followed along and modified an existing model, you might have discovered that some of the parts of it seem taken care of in theory, but in actuality may have gotten locked in the mold. Creating forming bucks that work perfectly every time takes experience, so the more you use vacuum forming, the better you will understand what shapes work and which ones don't. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of how vacuum forming works and are ready to begin experimenting with your own designs and add another tool to your arsenal. Don't forget to subscribe to the Matter Hackers YouTube channel and be sure to give us a follow at Matter Hackers on all your favorite social media platforms. To learn more and to order your own Make You Form Box today, go to matterhackers.com.